And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. We are here. <laughs> Naturally, we're here because you hear us and you see us. <laughs> hey, hey. Here, here. <laughs> it is officially the last show of March 2015. Uh, it's not exactly going out like a lamb. We've been in spring for one week. The month and of it's still winter. The month of starch is not going out like a lamb at all. I, uh, not a leg of lamb, a breast of lamb, a lamb chops, lamb with mint jelly. No kind of lamb, or, or lamb Slovaki, or lamb gyros, or lamb uh, uh, shish kebab. No lamb. It's it's been cold and damp and. Well, the rain, I, the rain I expect, I said rainiac, the rain I expect because we're, you know, April's upon us. Uh, you know, this is the very tail end of March and uh, the last show of March. But anyway, April showers brings May flowers. Is that how it goes? Yeah. Whatever, whatever. But usually the weather is very unpredictable and um, uh, erratic in the springtime in general. <laughs> And, uh, and in some parts of the world, very um, severe, like like Tornado Alley mm. in, the, in the Midwest. <laughs> it's nothing, nothing to joke about. But anyway, welcome to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21. And uh, we're coming to you from the newsletter Censored in uh, Northeastern New Jersey. And uh, I would like to introduce my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Well, as I said, I would prefer it to be spring. Even though technically it is, but it, it, it isn't. Right. It's like, uh, it's kind of like, you know, the, um, the reality <laughs> of the world and uh, somebody's uh, perception or fantasy versus reality. Mm -hmm. In reality, it's spring. In, in actuality, it's not. Not yet. No. And I hope we just don't go one of those winter into summer thingies. Oh boy. You know? Well, with climate change, anything's possible. Yes, we believe in science and climate change here at Newsletter Censored because we're highly intelligent people. We're not numbskull, imbecilic nincompoops like conservative Republicans are. And speaking of, uh, I was just telling <coughs> the Reverend Dr. Bill before we started the show that uh, Ted Cruz graduated from Pinocchio to the Penguin on Batman. <laughs> oh, he used I used to call him the the Tin Woodsman from the uh, the Wizard yeah. of Oz because of his schnozzola, his proboscis, his pointy his pointy proboscis. Well, he should be. He should have a nose this long like Pinocchio because he lies so much. The, little, the stupid ass. And he's getting all this face time, too. Yeah. Uh, and, and mind you, the mainstream media is not uh, broadcasting any rebuttals from any Democrat or progressive. God forbid that they should criticize a right-winger. Pussies. Okay. They don't have a spine like this Blackthorn Shillelagh. <coughs> Pussies. Um, I want to give greetings first to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. And also to Ken Thiessen, a former a WWE star. Okay. And uh, 
the president of KT Training to Win. All right, personal trainer extraordinaire from Boca Raton. Well, he's from Long Island, but he lives in Boca Raton, Florida. Ken Thiessen, I send you greetings. Also, greetings to all of my Facebook group administrators. Sasha Boyle, Jolton Joe Stebbins, Anthony Law, Laura. He's the uh, administrator of Everything is Food, Anthony Laura. And uh, Jean-Luc Laudan from South France. Greetings to all of you. Oh. <clears throat> uh, you know, um, let's see what I got here. Oh. Now, I was reading, um, interesting article and banner saying that corporations now own the rain that falls on the planet earth even though it falls on your property and uh, you could be fined for not paying a fee to whatever corporation for using rainwater their water which falls from the hev uh, the the first heavens from the sky and lands in your bucket or pickle barrel <laughs> on your property right which means if they own the rain then they must all also own the airspace surrounding the planet earth and if they own that and being that the uh, being that uh, Nestle's is trying to buy up all the and control all the Earth's aquifers to control the drinking water. That must mean that corporations also own the planet Earth, uh, the essence of life itself, which is pure water, the skies, the resources. So, so I guess they don't follow the uh, verses in the Bible which say that a God owns the wealth of the earth and the profit belongs to all. The profit of the earth belongs to all. The frackers own all the water too. Yeah, it's their water. So my Mookies. So my grandfather wasn't too far off when he said, mark my word, pretty soon they're gonna charge us a fee for breathing. Well, I said that many times years and years ago. Well, you know why he said that? He's they do have oxygen bars, you know, where you said, can go in and breathe clean he, oxygen. He said, um, you know, when, when cable TV came around, he took he had a fit. I am not paying for television. I am not paying to watch television. And then the first bottled spring water came out. What are you, crazy? Pay for water? You're out of your mind. And that's when he came out with this uh, statement. He also came out with the statement when we used to watch professional wrestling that, mark my word, society in America is going to become like the, the Roman Colosseum where people will, will have bloodlust. It'll get worse. They'll get bored with pro wrestling and then they'll, they'll want more. And now we have ultimate fighting, UFC, you know, where they try to take each other's heads off. Why do you think they stop on the on the For highways real. when there's an accident? For real. And gawk. Oh, the rubberneckers. The rubberneckers, yeah. They gawk at, at gore and accidents. Of course. To Timothy, read it, people. Look it up. How people will become in the end times. And it's sad. It, it's becoming that way. People are, are, are showing less compassion, less empathy, more selfishness. More, more Iron Randish, if you want to call it that. Selfishness as a virtue. So all this, um, all this nonsense uh, between that and and judges allowing Monsanto to patent Mother Nature, patent DNA, have a patent on Mother Nature. It it sounds like. It's not just the United States, but it sounds like our elected leaders, the politicians of the United States, and 
I don't know how the, how the corporations get away with it in other countries. I'm assuming it's either the, politi the corrupt politicians in their countries or the United States giving ultimatums and using blackmail with other governments to force the, these 1% no, it's corporations It's the World Bank and the IMF. That's doing it, right? Well, they're, they're, they push all that shit. Yeah, so they're selling they out... force countries. Yeah, we'll give you a big loan here. You don't pay it back, buddy. Isn't that extortion? Of course it is, but that's how America operates. It's corrupt. War yeah. is a racket. Schmedley Butler, General Schmedley Butler. Yeah, so the, so the corporations. So, that's it. So, listen. We all know CEOs are demons and scumbags, but a person does not have to take the bribe or uh. meet with, or meet with lobbyists. Now, who do you blame? Do you blame the CEO with his lobbyists? Do you blame the politician? Do you blame both? I blame both, but you but blame the system. The system allows it. So the politicians have sold out our planet Earth that God said we were supposed to share. And and, and they may and they have a fit over some few crumbs like food stamps and, and welfare and, 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 and something that's not an entitlement at all, social security. The Koch brothers don't want the mainstream masses to have anything, and they don't want they don't want the poor to have anything. That's correct because if the if the mainstream masses become secure, they will not work for crap. They'll, so that's why this whole stuff is is, is done on their. Oh yeah, part. they'll unionize. Yeah, of course, and then they'll what will that do? That will benefit the middle class and the poor. That's why we have privatized prisons built by corporations for free yeah, slave course. labor. The outsourcing and uh, some somebody, there was some stupid right-wing banner having uh, where Barack Obama is dressed like a Nazi yeah. and it says Barack Obama wants to force people to vote and underneath it says you you cannot force a real patriot to do anything Obama. Hey, since when is a Republican, a conservative Republican, a patriot? <laughs> They're anything but a patriot. That's correct. Offshore bank accounts and mailboxes, avoiding federal taxes, outsourcing American jobs. Um, owning uh, the water, owning the oxygen, owning the sky, turning, owning everything. Oh, uh, um, neglecting our veterans. So how are they? How on earth... The veteran is supposed to die on the battlefield. Are they patriots? And not come back here and bother us. Oh, oh, sabotaging the Constitution. Is that a patriot? Well, <laughs> geez, I mean, let's face it. Right? Edward Snowden is a patriot. Yeah, that's true. But they wanted to uh, 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 get him under the Espionage Act. Well, even, even John Kerry, a Democrat, Come on back here and face the face reality. A Democrat who's supposed to feel the old pain wants to arrest him, yeah. Edward Snowden. But uh, corporate but, Democrat so, does not feel your pain. Believe me. Well, not anymore, I guess. Not any time. Yeah, since FDR. Oh, since uh, JFK. Who? Since J Corp uh, Democrats. Corporate Democrats do not ever feel your pain. You're trying to say JFK was a corporatist? Well, or a of course semi? he was. Where did he get his money to run? So he owed somebody favors then. That's correct. They all owe favors. Now this, what I just said, is leading into something that is tragic, mm -hmm. uh, infuriating, uh, extremely frustrating. Uh, Dr. Gary Null was sabotaged. He was hacked into, uh, and they destroyed from what you tell me, his archives and lock, stock, and barrel. The web page was hacked, yes. And I, and, uh, what about? I guess uh, Facebook too, because he's been updating that too. So I don't know. I think I haven't. I haven't checked the. A lot of damage. I haven't checked the Progressive Radio Network. 
well, you better check his Facebook page, but uh, that's pretty horrible. He had a vast amount of archived material, extremely valuable, and well, uh, that's and, why it was. <laughs> and because of corrupt, evil, obsessive, capitalist, corporate greed, they sabotage one of the progressive movement's most dedicated, hardest working leaders, Gary No. And this goes to show you, this is tied into the planet Earth and all of its wealth and resources being sold out by our politicians, our capitalist two-party system politicians, to the fat cats, to the corporations. And, uh, you know, uh, um, I, I assume that his interns did not back up the archives that were placed on his website. We don't know the rest of the story. We don't know so everything. Let's not speculate. All right, let's not speculate. All right. The damage occurred, and that's all we know. Yeah. Now, speaking of wickedness and evil, before we start the show, I, I have a question for you. Uh, 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 being that you are a doctor of divinity, yeah. I, I have a Christian Christianity Bible question. It's not a silly question. Oh. It's not stupid, even though they say no questions are really... Well, I take that back. Some questions are stupid. It's the, the, the people are stupid sometimes who ask a stupid question. Yeah, they ask the obvious. Yeah. No, they don't. They ask stupid questions, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like that, that jerk who came up with the slogan, the customer's always right. Well, Les Brown, on that uh, popular hit... Uh, TV show, um, uh, Hardcore Porn, you know, the, por the porn shop, he says, the customer is not always right. Of course not. If a it's never been that. How if the customer is always right, why do we have a saying, uh, caveat emptor? Buyer, beware. i give you a perfect real-life example. Uh, one of my exes uh, was a fine jewelry manager, Lord and Taylor, and uh, there were there there were these people that uh, periodically went to the counter, and they would uh, buy a very expensive piece of jewelry, mm -hmm. and then um, they will o they would always return it for a full refund, coming up with a, the same excuse. Well, my husband didn't like it. It turned out. They were buying it to wear it to a special event, uh -huh. and then returning it. And, and and what happened? They set up a pattern. It was a pattern. So Lord and Taylor actually re refused their them as a customer at fine jewelry counter because hey, this is not rent or lend. I'm sorry, not rent. This is not lend fine jewelry. Yeah. Lend not to keep. Yeah, so, so they were scamming. This is a little scam that they had going, and they were actually refused business. So the customer is not always right. But uh, um, this question is uh, about angels and demons. And if the customer was always right, why would they make obsolete, uh, I mean, products that uh, become obsolete uh, almost immediately? Or, or uh, bad products? Yeah. Or import them from Japan? Uh, J Japan. China! Yeah, tainted, uh, 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 low Cat quality. Food, dog food. Yeah. Melanin, what, whatever. Plus, uh, no, no quality control whatsoever. Exactly. All for greed, all for cost. The first part of this show is technically and officially a part of, uh, our new series, Capitalism in a Conch Shell. Okay, Capitalism in a Conch Shell. And um, there's so much evidence to prove that capitalism, at least the capitalism that uh, conservatives want and what America has, is the devil's economics. Not the, not the fair hybrid blend of capitalism sort of that they have in Scandinavia. You know, uh, Denmark, Iceland, uh, Sweden, Norway, Finland, etc., etc. 
you know, where where well, that's uh, not uh, that's not capitalism. It's socialism. Where education and health care is a right, not a privilege. Yeah, it's socialism. So this is it's a brand of socialism. Capitalism, it's not capitalism. In, a, in a conch shell. I like waving it. I like saying it too. In a conch shell. Okay. Well, you'll see more of the conch later. If I have to conch somebody in the head with it. But anyway, angels and demons. Here's my question. If angels or fallen angels, which are demons, but they're, they're collectively, they're all angels. Some are good, some are evil. Okay. If they have this uh, superior supernatural power and abilities far, far be beyond far those be of mortal men far beyond those of mortal men then what was so damn special even though they were so powerful what was so special about the creation of Adam and Eve the creation of men that was so special if if the angels were far superior in every way to man it's very simple it is what is it is the the thing that escapes most of your counterfeit Christians what's that they don't understand that God is reproducing himself oh angels can't do that the humans become God but the angels are what they are there is no more potential so they're for them they're immortal that's correct. They uh, cannot reproduce. But they are not God. But they're immortal. They they have they have the freedom of of choice. They can make their own decisions. They have they are brilliant. They mm -hmm. are super talented. They Lucifer. are very strong and powerful. Lucifer was very talented. They can fly anywhere they want. He played the pipes. He did a lot of stuff. He yeah, was, there, there's some he girls. Was, uh, there's some girls in showbiz that play the pipes too. He was the second to get to he, the top. The old casting couch, little levity bells. He was the second cherub whose wing covered the throne of God. The cherubims, yeah. Okay. That means he was most likely, if you were looking at the, a line of hierarchy, he was third in line. Third in line. Top banana. God the Father, the Word, and him, and Lucifer. He was the first. Uh, I imagine he was the first angel created, to be created. Probably, probably, probably. And he was the the primary archangel. He had like a four star general rank. Or Secretary of State rank. Well, he was right there in the government of God. Like I say, maybe, yeah. probably the third, the third. You know, I'm not going to say in line for the throne because he's not in line for the throne. Right. I mean, that's what he wanted. That's what he wanted. Yeah. He wanted to exalt himself so, above so God. You said vanity right. was the first sin that was that was ever created. Well, that's what he eventually uh, iniquity his iniquity was selfishness. He became so vain that he yeah. thought he could take over God's throne. Yes, yeah, sounds like Ayn Rand, right? Selfishness yeah. is a virgin, a virtue, uh, a virtue. Now, uh, um, the uh, the word cherub, you know, is it, it goes way back to like ancient Babylon and uh, that whole Mesopotamia, spelled with a K. Cherub is a C. No, 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 no. The, C -H -E -R. The, there is a word, a cherub, well, that's a cherub. and uh, that's a, and the statues of in in ancient Mesopotamia, <coughs> and in Babylon, and I think in Persia too. The statues of the a cherub with a K look just like gargoyles, and that's exactly the description found in the Bible uh -huh, of uh -huh. angels. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, the well, they're all the 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 ones that uh, in is in Ezekiel. Where uh, they they transport <clears throat> they transport this spiritual vehicle that uh, God travels in, and they have four faces. They have a face of a man, a, uh, an ox, a dizzy. They have four wings. They, you know, I mean, they, you yeah. know. 
Now, if you talk I like to the four beasts in front of God's throne of, or whatever, of I mean, course, these are gargoyles. Of course, they're like gargoyles. Of mm. course, if you watch uh, Ancient Aliens, you know, Von Dynakin and all those guys, they would tell you that they're extraterrestrials. They're not, angels don't exist. They were actually extraterrestrials uh, interacting and uh, yeah, there's no proof of that and the uh, the Immaculate Conception was if from you an accept alien what the Bible says you cannot accept that number right. one well they're both are contradictory they're the ancient aliens uh, the whatever you want to call them archaeologists uh, they they have a little bit of proof in terms of the the, the drawings that they have found, the carvings, that look like, they look like what? aliens and, and vehicles flying in the sky, extraterrestrial. They look like our idea of aliens, not what would have been or what, uh, whatever. Yeah. You've got to ask me, if, they were, if there were aliens here, where the hell are they now? What was their business here? Why are they always uh, a you landing know? out in the country bumpkin land? That's correct. Why are they in hiding? Why don't they? I, I was kidnapped by a flying saucer. I was, abdu I was, I was ab abducted. I was abducted. They examined me all over. They stuck something up on my vagina. And they got so sick and tired of my uh, my ways of talking that they they dropped me off. They kicked me off their spacecraft. They couldn't communicate with me <laughs> <laughs> because they say let's get rid get rid of this let's let's get rid of this stupid tea bagger uh, stupid right, tea bagger let's person. understand your your basic question right basic question answer is that God when he could he put one third of the angels on the earth to beautify it and to take care of it, etc., etc. And of course, Lucifer had a throne, and he was the head of that little excursion. Unfortunately, they did not do what they were supposed to do. And they tried to hide it they had a job. from God. They, they were in charge of the earth. So God understood <laughs> that he could not, he was probably his plan to make the those angels into gods. That was probably his plan A, but it didn't yeah. work. The, the, so he had to go to plan B. So the ideal scenario did not work out. So plan That's B correct. came along. And plan B, <clears throat> with humans made from the dust of the ground, if they did not perform, they could be dead and burned up. And returned to dust. That's correct. And because the angels cannot. They are immortal. And speaking of the creation of uh, humans, when the, what, uh, when <laughs> is it mentioned in the Bible when life first begins? Explain to these people out there. Well, it was when God breathed into the nostrils of the inanimate Adam. You hear that? That he gave them. Then he gave him life. You hear that? Right wing fundamentalist zealot evangelical right to lifers. When uh, Adam received the first breath of life, because you from know God, what? because there was no spermatozoon and ovum that got together at that time, yeah. and it, Adam did not have a belly button. That's true. So it's not the fertilized human egg conception where, when life begins. It is not the the embryo that breathes like a fish. It is when the breath of life enters <gasps> the body, and that's the only that's the only time the Bible mentions yes, it does. when life begins, isn't it, Doctor Bill? And after that, of course, uh, it mentions that the life is in the blood. Bella Lugosi, and God does not want you to eat blood. Bela Lugosi said that too. The life is in the blood. He said. He blood, also said, blood. "I don't drink wine." That's when his guests asked him if oh, he yeah, could yeah, join, yeah, join yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't drink. I don't drink the wine. Blood. The life is in the blood. Right. Blood, blood, blood. Blood. Okay, now let us sink our teeth into these readings. Um, uh, 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 it's kind of appropriate that I ask that question because the next so-called holiday is Pagan Easter, Ishtar. Ishtar. Is the next holiday coming up. And uh, let me just say a word about that. Just, just, just to get people riled up and and to start asking themselves stupid questions about you know their beliefs and that thing. If Jesus died on Good Friday, Jesus knew how many hours there were in a day. Twenty-four. If Jesus died on Friday at three o'clock in the afternoon. And he was in the grave for three days and three nights, which is 72 hours. Count it from Friday 3 to, let's say, Sunday morning when the women went with the spices to the tomb and he was already risen. Count it. How many hours do you get? I'm not good at math. You do it for me. 36. Okay. Not 72. The fact of the matter was, with a little deductive reasoning, Sherlock Holmes, etc., you find out that the uh, Jesus died on Wednesday. Okay? At 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Now count it. You're 72 hours on Saturday. He rose already on Saturday. So when the women went to the tomb on Sunday, he was already risen. Mm -hmm. Three days and three nights. Just as Jonah was in the belly of a big fish. And for three days and, and three nights. What you just said proves to all these holy roller Christians out there that think they have all the answer. What what is what is, what are you proving to this misconception that they might have? Well, you're proving the fact that they believe that he died on Friday. Good Friday. A lot of them but believe. When, but when you're going to talk about eggs and bunnies and, 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 and all the rest of the uh, garbage that is uh, 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 around Easter, what the hell does anything have to do with his death with all that crap? No, it's a pagan fertility god. Or That's something. right, Ishtar. Ishtar, yes. You know, you know, a goddess. <clears throat> and you could you could listen to two Easter readings by the Re the Reverend Doctor William J. Eisenman. I think you have two. You have the Easter Lie. I think it's. No, I just titled it Easter. Easter, and then there's in the newsletter. Well, there's another one called Jesus Did Not Die on right. Friday. Yeah. So there's technically two readings about the truth about Easter that's on the internet if you look it up uh, under Mega Life 21. It's on YouTube. Now, I don't know what browser the gentleman was using last night, but I was playing chess with a gentleman in India. Uh huh. And I had referred him to Newsletter Censored. Yes. And he went there and he said he couldn't pull it up. I told him you have to use IE, you know, kind of Internet cockamant. Explorer, but he said he couldn't pull it up. So I don't know what the problem is. If I remember tonight, maybe I'll check it out. Some people to internationally website. have told me that they can, their, their, their uh, ISP is a little temperamental. Sometimes they can't, oh, yeah, they well. can't pull up pages, and uh, I, from what I hear, Microsoft is giving uh, Internet Explorer the axe. I don't care because I don't use it. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm I'm very happy with my but Firefox. The point of it is, even now. even my one chess uh, the website that I go to, there's a lot of people using IE8. We're up to IE10. Or 11, for crying out loud. Well, pretty soon there's going to be an IE zero. <laughs> you know, uh, um, but, uh, you know, with all the with all the wonderful free add-ons that's available with Mozilla Firefox, 
you know, and, and, and it's free, of course, and uh, it's like... Uh, well, I'll tell you what, and I don't know why, possibly stupid updates from Firefox, but my Net Video Hunter and my Real Player are not working <coughs> on Firefox. I cannot download anything, did you especially from YouTube. Did you check to see if it was enabled? The Net Video Hunter is not on my toolbar anymore, but the arrow is. Okay. And when I click on the arrow, it says, no download this session. That's strange, because I, I have the icon in the upper right-hand right corner for Net Video Hunter. And you click on it, yeah. and then it, it, the, yeah. the page comes up, and for, you choose what right. you want to download. For you people out there that are wondering what the hell we're talking about, Net Video Hunter is a free Mozilla add-on that enables you to copy, to rip a video from the internet and save it on your hard drive. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, so anyway, um, technology is wonderful. Gotta love science. Can't stop science like George Costanza said. Can't stop it. Can't stand you. George Costanza. Can't stand you. Can't stop science. No, you can't. Just keeps on moving ahead. <laughs> you know, technology, you know, hey, the technology and the science is fantastic. It's the idiots who let the technology control their lives. They, in the past, the dark ages, they did censor progress. Yes. Well, you know what I mean? Like, people lost, uh, young, younger generations lost the ability to be able to communicate with others, you know, and, and, and they use it, they use their, their tablets and their smartphones as an excuse and they're texting. Hey, I think the smartphone and the tablets are wonderful. I think the tablet will replace the laptop someday, completely. But, hold on. Fucking thing. But I still am able to communicate with people face to face, you know. I haven't lost any of my social skills or abilities. I don't I don't bury myself in a damn smartphone and walk around like this, like these idiot kids. You know, I'm always I'm always aware of my environment. Very important. So anyway, Sink, sink your teeth into the first reading. Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Penguin or Pinocchio? Take your pick. Isn't the only ardent critic of Obamacare in Congress who is signing up for health coverage under a law he vowed to repeal? Well, as long as they can benefit. See, they... they <laughs> They don't, the milestone. they don't want the poor and the little guy to have anything nice. As long as the rich, white uh, conservatives get to have everything. That's all that counts. Yeah. <laughs> Kansas Representative Tim Hulescamp, chairman of the Tea Party Caucus in the U.S. House, admits he too has enrolled for health care coverage through the Affordable Care Act despite repeatedly voting to repeal it. He is a needle nose manudge. For the record, I am an Obamacare. Yeah! The Republican <laughs> Hughes Camp recently confessed <laughs> to constituents at a town hall meeting in North Central Kansas. <laughs> According to the Clay Center Dispatch, my wife complains about it all the time. Cruz and Hulescamp and other far-right lawmakers are in an awkward political position. Do they use an Obamacare exchange to purchase insurance and risk being charged with hypocrisy? Or do they stand on principle and decline coverage or resort to the private insurance market, giving up thousands of federal dollars offered to government employees to help pay premiums. 
They have a choice. Some are choosing Obamacare. Cruz, a Republican senator who is running for president, said that his family planned to go on Obamacare because they'd Free. no longer be able to get health coverage through his wife's employer. Oh, so what you're saying is poor little Theodore and his wife are, are, uh, are having it tough. They have a tough life. And they're scraping the bottom of the barrel and, you know, they might not, poor Teddy might not be able to see his doctor, right? Remember, there was a there was a, a editorial some time ago about this family. I think they were a family of four. They were having a hard time on four hundred twelve thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Yeah. That's the kind of stories we write about: the poor, the needy, the fatherless. Huh? Yeah. People making four hundred twelve thousand dollars a year. Unbelievable. What about the people on minimum wage that are making fifteen thousand dollars a year? Way below the poverty level. Way below the poverty level. She's taking unpaid leave from her job to join Cruz on the campaign trail. Oh God! Like Cruz, Yule's camp has met railed for years against Obamacare in speeches in Congress, uh -huh. on the stump during elections, in town hall meetings with voters, in emails. Hold on. We're doing a show. We're doing a talk show. We're on the air. Thank you. That's old BL's above. In know, a petition. Working through, working through a human being circulated among supporters to defund Obamacare. He described the health care law as a disaster and the most despised legislation in recent American history. Asked whether he sees any contradiction between his outspoken opposition to Obamacare and his family's enrollment, he said the law forces members of Congress to sign up. Like millions of other American families, he said, we object to this expensive liberty attacking mandate. It's true that members of Congress who want to take advantage of health benefits offered through their employer or the federal government must use plans offered through a government-run exchange in the District of Columbia. But that's not the whole story. Hules Camp could have foregone coverage completely or shunned the exchange and purchased a family health plan directly from a private broker. Representative Louis Gomert, Republican Texas. Gomer Pyle? Yeah. Decided to go without health care insurance rather than sign up for Obamacare. Jackass. Yeah, because he's probably rich. Some other lawmakers have said they would go through the private market to avoid the exchange. Representative Frank Lobiando. They can afford to go through, through the private market. Of New Jersey. And Representative Diane Black of Tennessee, both Republicans. That's why they're being all independent about it. But purchasing insurance on the private market would mean that Hules Camp, a married father of four, would have to forego the employer contribution that the government offers to offset the cost of the members' premium. Oh, oh, oh that, that's really going to set them back. They're, they're going to end up in the poorhouse. Give me a break. That contribution could be worth nearly one thousand dollars. Listen, I, I know for a fact. I know a, a small to moderate, well-established middle-class business owner 
that's paying about four or five hundred a month for a moderately decent health insurance plan. You mean to tell me these crooks can't afford to top it all, to pay for top of the line privatized health insurance? All these public servants should be paying for their own health insurance privately. They can afford it. And that would be one thousand dollars per month. For top I don't know what tip top top of the line costs, That's but I'm sure is. these people can afford it. Well of course they can afford it. Come but on. They, if they, it, but they're not gonna do that if they you know they don't want to pay it. Yeah, like like Chris Christie and his wife supposedly are worth seventeen million, I hear. It might be more now. So and, and he's making being governor even though he travels most of the time. <laughs> he's making about the same as a congressman, 175000 a year. You mean to tell me he can't pay $1,000 a month for his own health no, insurance? No, no, no. Come on. Anyway, continue. The salary for a rank and file remember, member of Congress is $174,000 a year. Yeah. Not counting perks and, and some members have said they will use the exchanges to purchase health care, but bribes plan to return the federal contribution money to the U.S. Treasury. Oh boy! Hughes Camp spokesman did not immediately respond to a request to clarify whether Hughes Camp had accepted federal dollars to help pay for his premium. Because there are subsidies involved, you know? Okay. Yeah, well, I believe I would, no, actually I was going to say I would believe a car dealer before a politician, but I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> anyway. She's a beauty. Let's look under the hood. Yeah, kick the tire. Kick the tire. Kick the tire. U.S. Representative Aaron Schock, who last week announced he is resigning, says he has reimbursed the government for all the mileage he has claimed since he was elected to Congress in 2008. Really? A spokesman for the embattled Illinois Republican said that Schock age 33, has reimbursed all the money. Oh, Republican, he's Republican. I don't believe him. Received for official mileage since his election. Yeah. The move came after an analysis of government documents and shock campaign finance records showed that from January 2010 through June 30th, 2014, Jock was reimbursed $90,000 for putting about 171,000 miles on his personal vehicle. Well, I would be very shocked if Shock reimbursed anything, any of the taxpayers' money. But when Shock sold his only vehicle, a Chevrolet Tahoe, Oh, he's a humble Republican. In July 2014, it had about 81,860 miles on it. He's either a skin flint or a cheap bastard. Oh, well, same thing. It's either Far a cheap, less cheap bastard or... Than the miles for which shop was reimbursed. Federal and state laws require that the owner report mileage when transferring ownership. Earlier this year, Shock repaid $40,000 for controversial redecorating work said to mimic the set of TV's Downton Alley. Abby, excuse me. He had done it on his Capitol Hill office. The Justice Department has begun investigating 
shocks congressional expenses and business dealings. That's why he's resigning. Okay? He got caught. He got caught! You know, when people get caught with their hand in a cookie jar, you know, they usually, um, they get all humble and uh, they make the face like, you know, when Ralph Cramden is, was guilty of something, you know, they, uh -huh. they, they you know, they, 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 uh, they, sometimes they apologize profusely, you know, they just get all humble. But who knows if they did not get caught, if yeah. they would continue. Of course. To do the crap that they do. They would. All right. You, uh, the in-depth. We still have some time. All right, because the in. I'm going to blow my stack if it happens. The in-depth attempt. Go out there and. At an explanation of the relationship between business and government deserves kudos. Mm -hmm. And a round of applause for exposing the chummy relationship right. between our elected officials and the corporate fat cat. Right. Involvement by the states and local officials sends up red flags to homeowners constantly seeing an increase in their property tax. If corporations can entice the states and the towns with promises to develop dormant or fallow properties and win huge tax giveaways, mm -hmm. Residential property owners should be part of the deal and also reap some benefit. That's not the case in Hackensack, New Jersey. Yeah. With many development plans in the works, homeowners were recently told by the mayor that they would never see lower taxes. Really? Oh, but the corporations do. 60% of corporations don't pay any taxes at all. Yeah, and how come nobody uh, shouts that out <laughs> to the politicians when they make that statement? So how do the politics of development survive? By apathy. And by having elections in May instead of November. You hear that? It's time to discuss the relationship between government and business. Well, you know, um, I may, I had an idea last night. I told uh, Sash Boyle. I posted it on the uh, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth Facebook group. I said, you know what, what would be nice? What would work? If, if law enforcement officers and federal agents would get bonuses for investigating uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, arresting, taking down bad, crooked cops and bad federal agents. I think we had... Pay one, them off. Bonuses. Didn't we, didn't we have a guy some time ago in the FBI called Elliot Ness? Yeah, they made a TV series uh, uh -huh. about him. Well, that's what he, uh, he did. That was his job. To take down the big guy. Like, in other words, instead of these worthless CEOs getting bonuses, why not give uh, 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 FBI agents, police officers, etc. They are public employees. Bonuses. My friend. If they see corruption in their own police force, uh, excuse me, they get a bonus for taking, for busting the bad boys. A big bonus. But according to the Republicans, it is our public sector people who are causing all of these problems. Really? And therefore, you don't want to give them more money. What is Scott Walker doing to the teachers, the firemen, the police, etc., in his Wisconsin? Could you imagine how fast Scott Walker and Chris Christie and, and, the, and their ilk would get nailed if, if, uh, uh, if federal agents or state police, undercover police, would get bonuses 
for for getting for digging for for, for uh, um, um, finding dirt on these high-level politicians, finding dirt, flushing out the skeletons out of their closet, convict, they'd, they'd be arresting flushed. them, convicting them. <laughs> they'd be flushed out of their jobs. No, no, you? not by the pe not by the. Uh, uh, no, in other words. The in F other words, what you're trying to do... The United States would, uh, on a federal level, have to be the one to, to offer the bonuses for bringing it down... It's not the bonuses that corruption. is the problem here. The problem is... Well, how do you get a cop on regular salary to bust another crooked, crooked cop? Well, you got to pay him. You got to pay him a commission. No, you can't. Don't you understand what I'm saying? Everything is the can't. The people on the top are in charge. They will not let it happen. You have to change the system. So they, there is no way around that where an FBI agent, agents, would be sent in to investigate Scott Walker. Who's going to send them in? The, 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 the president. Well, have a secretly send them in to investigate. But the president is not in charge of the FBI per se. Oh, he's There's a, a guy that leads the FBI. There's a guy that leads the CIA. There's a guy that leads the uh, well, the president, Navy intelligence. The president is, uh, is the president the commander in chief of the yeah, but he doesn't the, he doesn't control everything of the Pentagon. He doesn't control everything. He doesn't control the Pentagon either? When he wants to send troops out to go to war, he has to ask the permission of Congress. Uh, right, he's not a okay. dictator, of course. Well, but, uh, but you, what you are doing is you are saying, I want the little guy to be in charge. It ain't going to happen. I'm talking about real life superheroes. I'm talking about bugging people. I'm talking about uh, using high technology surveillance. I'm talking about bringing down governors that are crooked. You're talking about whistleblowers, and what are they doing to whistleblowers? They should they should be paying them bonuses, not the CEOs. But who's going to pay them these bonuses? Their bosses? So that they will uncover the boss's corruption? Well, the, are you out of your mind? The the head of the FBI should not be in cahoots with people like Rick Scott or Scott Walker. You know what I mean? It's the system. They should be. They are a separate entity. They are not independent. Nothing is independent. That's why they won't send anybody in. That's why they won't pay the bonus bonuses, because if they there did, a lot of my system would work. Never there mind what Bill said. People, My system would work. There are a lot of people in police and etc. that would do the right thing without bonuses. But it can't be done. <laughs> it can't be done because you want Bezel Bub to, 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 to do what he wants. He's want. in charge. Now, you bullshit, 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 him. bullshit. It can be done. It can be. Keep hope alive, like Jesse Jackson used to say. Yes, there is it hope can alive be done. for changing the system. Why do you deny this? You think that a cop on his regular salary is going to go around busting crooked cops? It doesn't even involve salary. It involves his job. He won't do it because his job will be at stake. And why, He'll be gone. And why does it have to be a civil suit against a, a, a bad cop? Why why can't it because be Because crim the criminals, <laughs> the, the, the grand juries won't do it. They will not. Do you know what would happen if well, they Well, then they're corrupt. It? Of course they're corrupt. Oh, my God, ladies and gentlemen. He just found out you know that what? the whole goddamn you know, system God is damn, corrupt. This damn fucking liberalism. It, I, look, I'm a liberal. Don't get me wrong. I'm a progressive. But I'm not, like, so far to the goddamn left that I, I have apathy about taking action. You know, you got to take the bull by the horns in life. You know what I mean? You got to know what the bull you're taking by the horns. Ah, Bafangul. Listen. And it's not making bonuses. It is. It's changing the system. How do you get somebody to do their job better? You pay them. You pay them extra. Oh, really? Boy, gee, the CEOs are making a lot of money. Are they doing their jobs better?
Well, we all know that we all know they're worthless. Well, how scum. can you be? You just said that this is how to do it. I'm talking about whistleblowing, receiving a commission to do whistleblowing. Change the system. You are putting you know the card before the horse. Too much to the right is no, no good. No, it has nothing to do with that. Too much to, to the that. left is no good. You got it. Has kinda... nothing to do with that. It has to do with you coming up with some ideal situation which does not exist. So ideal situations will, in your book, will not work. Yeah, when you change the system. Why can't you get this through your head? You don't mean to tell me if you, you cannot start a task force of undercover federal agents or cops that investigate political start? corruption by, by offering them bonuses. Who's going to start it? I just said we had Elliot Ness. Where's the Elliot Nesses today? Why did they disappear? Ah! It's a wallet. Corruption! Brother. That's why they disappeared. Ah, oh, the fucker. The corrupt are in charge. All right. All right. All right. All right. Well, I'm just going to sit around and wait for the second coming of Jesus and do absolutely nothing. All right. We're going to break. Why do you keep saying that? that because not I am thing. not... I, Change the system! Not, I don't believe... Change in, the system! I don't believe in pacifism. Why I, do you keep doing this? I don't believe in pacifism. Changing the system has nothing to do with pacifism. I, I believe that sometimes you got to... Change the system! How many times do I got to say it? Take up arms. Vote. That would put the same Vote. type of people back into power. <laughs> well, well, actually, you know what? God could do that today. He ain't. Well, you don't Bezel believe, Bob well, you is don't still believe, in charge. Well, you don't believe in the death penalty, so that makes you more to the left than me. What does that have to do with changing the because system? Because I'm trying to figure out why you're bucking a simple plan that will entice the plan will work agents and law enforcement officers the plan will to work. go beyond the plan won't work until the system is changed why are you constantly against changing the system i bet i, I it's wrong did you ever hear of special elite task forces oh my put the guy they have them the the the, the, the bad guys have you keep doing it you keep doing I, it. Yeah, you know, I do have a bit of idealism in me. Yes, I think things can be done if, they're, if, if the if right they're people right. are in control. If they're, yeah, bingo! Changing the system! So if they're done right, done right doesn't mean... You, 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 you fuck, what you're trying to say is... What you, puts the what right people what in What you're trying to say is giving big bonuses to, to federal agents and again. cops won't make them rat out, whistleblow and rat Forget out their own it. people? Forget about it. Why don't Forget you ask about it. You know, some, Why don't you go and ask some other people uh, if this will work? This guy in is the incredible. Will Stubborn. this work in the corrupt system we have? It won't. And it has nothing to do with me or my ideas. Or I'm left or right or in between. So you mean to tell me there's nobody in Washington that is nice and honest enough to start a program like this, a whistleblowing for bonuses, for uh, for payoffs. Keep pushing it, okay? That's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> nobody, gonna nobody can start. It ain't going to work. So, in other because words, you have to change the system. With my idea, with my goddamn times. ideal system, Edward Snowden would have got a pretty big bonus, right? But he would have got fired That's from his boss. You know what? Who is in charge? Let me tell you something. Snowden was not in charge. Let me tell you something, bosses that are in charge. Here we go. If you have a boss that's in charge, and you and you tell the truth, under the Constitution of the First Amendment, he should not be able to fire you for but telling the does. truth. But he does. But that ain't fair. What the hell is fair? So what are you supposed to do? In other words, if you work for... We have the Constitution, we had slavery. In other words, fair? In other words, if somebody worked for Nestle's and somebody said in the cafeteria, you know what, it's not right that our CEO wants to control all the drinking water of the world. It's not right. And and, and then he, if he finds out and he fires the guy. That guy 
by right, should not be fired. Why, because he disagrees with the CEO of a company? Who the hell are you of being the CEO? You can fire me because... The, the CEO is in charge. Well, I'm supposed to kiss your ass? When the king is in charge... You You're supposed what? to kiss... You kiss the ass of the king. Fuck that. If you want to uh, su be successful. If you don't and you want your head locked off, you don't. You Simple know... that? It's the same thing with MSNBC pussies. They, they, <laughs> they don't say what they really want to say as real journalists. They, because they ain't real journalists. What the hell are you talking about? Rachel Maddow does a lot of talking, but she could do more talking if she wanted to. Yeah, so anyway, Ed Schultz too. We're going to be joined now by uh, How to Defeat a Conservative uh, and uh, William H. Morrill III with a special message from, <clears throat> from both. Very special message from How to Defeat a Conservative. And William H. Morrow, the third hour commercial voiceover artist. Fucking flower children. I'm William Morrow. Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. Okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III, for promo and your words of wisdom. And also, you viewed um, our debut of uh, How to Defeat a Conservative in, in, in Biblical Proof with the Scripture. All right. Let us sink our teeth into these readings. <clears throat> now that Dr. Bill finished his lunch. While phasing out plastic microbeads is a victory for New Jersey, the battle is only half won. The legislation signed by Governor Christie this week Define synthetic plastic microbeads as any intentionally added non biodegradable solid plastic particles. However, by including the word non biodegradable, the personal care industry will be able to sneak biodegradable plastics such as polylactic acids into toothpaste and scrubs to replace the current polypropylene plastic microbeads. Well, polypropylene is um, 
pretty tough <laughs> form of plastic. Here's the catch. Bioplastics like polyelactic acids can decompose only in high heat environments, such as composting facilities, and thus would not decompose in New Jersey's waters, or in the human body. Yeah. Hey, you know all those nonstick pans that people have that, that scratch and chip eventually? Well, if those flakes enter your body, they don't come out right away. They stay there for years. Uh, so or I, I hear seven years. In marine life. Yeah. Yep. Why? These plastic beads travel down the drain. But are too tiny to be filtered through wa wastewater treatment plants and end up being discharged directly into our waterways. Hey. There's a humongous amount of garbage floating in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, there's this sludge, you know, from the... Uh, uh, there's a dead area there. British Petroleum. From all the junk. Yeah, yeah. The Gulf of and Mexico crap. has uh, uh, the pollution from the uh, BP oil spill. It's like, a, like, it's like a ring around a bathtub. The, 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 the sea floor of uh, the Gulf of Mexico is, is still contaminated. Yeah. From there, the plastics act as a sponge, absorbing harmful substances such as insecticides and industrial chemicals. Fish mistake these particles for food, <laughs> and they potentially enter our food chain. Plastics of any type or size do not belong in toothpaste and exfoliating products. An abundance of natural alternatives are available to replace plastic. You mean common toothpaste? Common toothpaste! Well, I'm going to use hydrogen peroxide from now on. I'm not buying any more toothpaste from the store. What is plaque anyway? It's it's bacteria, right? Plaque, plaque is yes, it's solidified. Plaque, uh, uh, halitosis, is a bad breath is from bacteria, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you know, well, per peroxide kills it on contact. Plus, it'll whiten your teeth. Change of pace. I make no secret that I am not a fan of kids. I, I, I feel you. I, I, I can identify with that. I don't want to babysit. I don't want kids of my own. I don't think kids of any age are cute. I definitely don't want to hold them. Well, they're cute if you're if you're visiting them, but if you have to live with them and take care of them and deal with their tantrums and everything, and <laughs> different story. Those last two items are causing me trouble. See, many of my friends and relatives are spawning. <laughs> Inevitably, I wind up looking at pictures of their offspring and or going to see the newborn critter. <laughs> <laughs> this person's funny. This person's funny. You, you know what? I, I can identify with that too because there's nothing more boring than a person who just shows you photos of their kids. Everything's about their kids, their whole life, their whole waking moment. <laughs> I can usually put on a smile and pretend I'm enjoying myself for a short time. Oh, how, but how cute. Oh, how adorable. People often ask two questions. Huh? I have no idea how to answer. The first question is some variation of, is a little so-and-so cute? Yeah. Is it, oh, how adorable. The uh, second is, do you want to hold no, so -so? no. Especially if the diaper is loaded. <laughs> Especially if the diaper is loaded. Jeez. 
I don't find their kids cute. And I don't want to hold them. But how do I say that gently? No, thank you. Here's, That's as gentle as I can think of. Here's a quote about the grouchy commander-in-chief of babysitters and baby haters, W.C. Field. Get the hell away from me, you little bastard. You bother me. Anyone who hates dogs and children can't be all bad. <laughs> uh, didn't he have a flask of whiskey in his jacket? Why do you think he had a cherry nose? He had that bright, like Rudolph. <laughs> Ro Rosacea. Get the hell out. Tip, Tip O'Neill had that, remember him? Get the hell away from me, you little bastards. <laughs> Perhaps if you had this printed on a t-shirt to wear in the presence of babies and their parents, you wouldn't be invited to interact with them. However, <laughs> if the worst happens and you are ambushed and confronted with a baby, here's how you respond to the cuteness question. You turn away and say, yeah, yeah, he's cute, he's cute, he's cute. No, thank you. I don't want to hold him. Isn't baby Sophie cute? If you say so. Answer. I've never seen anything like her. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the episode on Seinfeld when he had to go to the Hamptons to see the baby, uh, some friends they had, and there's a, there's a really annoying, high-pitched, nasal twang woman, you know, and with a big nose, and, and the baby, she kept on saying, you want to see my baby, so adorable, oh, a beautiful, and, and everybody was like vomiting, they were like making like they were throwing up because it was ugly Every as hell. Day, yeah. Of course, she was ugly. When someone asks if you want to hold a baby, you can say, no, I don't think so. I have some idea of where that baby has been. You know, people in general, and this goes for parents too, the, uh, the way they interact with their children, people have to just not feel guilty and bad about saying no, no thank you. <coughs> just say no thank you. Uh, uh, well, that was a good answer. Is the baby, you think the baby's cute? I've never seen anything like her. Never. Not even never. in Madagascar. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. My fiancé, Jerry, has a daughter-in-law who flashes both of us intimate parts of her body. She's a grown woman. She's a daughter-in-law. She flashes the... Uh, and, wait, wait. Her husband knows this? She's, he's the one she's flashing at. Both of them. Both of them? It's one of those, huh? At a recent gathering, she went down to the floor... Uh-oh. Two feet away from where Jerry was sitting and gave us both a full view up her dress. This is like a public uh, a family affair? There, were, there was a group of people there? And you mean she's lifted her dress? She went down on the floor. Like a spread eagle kind of a thingy, maybe? I don't know the position. But, but she, she flashed her private, her, 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 her coochie, her pussy. She did it deliberately. I thought the time one of her breasts popped out of her blouse was a wardrobe malfunction. Oops! Oh yeah, like at this, one of the Super Bowls, what was it? Janet Jackson, Janet Jackson accidentally, whoops! I no longer feel that way. That was a pattern here. <laughs> Jerry is a pushover. He doesn't oh, say anything. It's kind of embarrassing. Man. He just runs away from it. Yeah, but in front of family and all that? I'm afraid things will only get worse. Yeah, she well, must be trying to run me off. Maybe. What's next? She's going to engage in intercourse, sexual intercourse, 
at a family, uh, they're at a family dinner, a holiday uh, get together? I can't think of any other reason for her behavior. Hmm. We have decided to not go on vacation with them this year because of this. Jerry is doing what he can for us to avoid being around her, but he has a one-year-old granddaughter he adores to consider. What do you think is going on? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Monkey see, monkey do. Who? Now I'm saying... The, the, Who's the daughter emulating? The kid. Daughter-in-law. No, I'm just saying, you said does it, they have a child? There's a one-year-old granddaughter which Jerry likes. Yeah. So he doesn't want to, you know, cut ties so he can't see the one-year-old granddaughter. Well, you don't want the one-year-old granddaughter to be witnessing this type of behavior either, right? <laughs> I don't know if she was involved. Answer. I think the daughter-in-law either has no sense of modesty or she's an exhibitionist who enjoys shocking people. Because it bothers you and embarrasses your fiancé, he should tell his son and explain how it makes both of you feel. If the son delivers the message to his wife, it should not cause a family rift. Wow. exhibitionist or she's trying to she's trying to keep her mother-in-law away oh, boy. I have been listening to the US House Democrats object to the fact that House and Senate Republicans want cuts in necessary domestic problems, su pro problems such as Medicaid, Medicare, and aid to crime victims. Everything to benefit the people. Meanwhile, the, the yeah. supposedly fiscally prudent Republicans want to increase U.S. defense spending, even though the United States spent $640 billion on defense in 2013. Not to mention corporate subsidies. The, the country yeah. spending the second most amount of money is China at one hundred and sixty six billion dollars. Talking about the military budget? Yeah. Oh, China's gearing up for something. What about the United States? Worse. Jesus. Like the guy in India I was playing chess with last night. Why does the United States feel it has to be all around the world? This is the guy who lives in India. Yeah. He, he had a very legitimate question. No kidding. Very intelligent I man. I gave him a legitimate answer. Corporations. That's why. Agreed, yeah, agreed. To yeah, me. Yeah, it's true. It appears that the United States is either not utilizing its defense spending wisely or has misguided concepts at what it needs to spend on defense. I believe in a strong defense. But to spend as much as the United States does seems to indicate either a bloated defense budget or a military attempting too many functions. One would think that the House and the Senate Republicans would be as demanding of the defense budget as they are of spending for domestic problems. It's a, it not only have conservatives made the United States a laughing stock of the world, but also a great embarrassment. Well, here's I, 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 you know I can't I can't when when people from other countries ask questions like that or say things like that, I have to if they're telling the, the truth, I have to agree with them. And it, it's an embarrassment. 
it's an embarrassment. Now, some flag-waving inbred hick, some teabagger from that lives down yonder, of course he's going to, like, call the guy names and all this shit because he's a, he's a moron. He's a moron. He's against America. The person's a moron. And America's exceptionalism. Yeah, being a bully, being being greedy, trying to steal other people's resources. We're getting back. We're going getting back to perception. You know what I mean? If somebody is wrong, they're wrong in my book, unless they prove themselves right. Yes, but unfortunately, the hardest thing for a person to do is unlearn something that is wrong. Okay. Well. I guess there's only one hope for people that are absolutely impossible. You know what I mean? You gotta do what you gotta do, brother. <laughs> now I forgot what I was gonna say. I had something very important. You digressed. I digressed right off the road. <laughs> All right. House Republicans launched a boldly conservative 10-year budget on Tuesday. Boldly conservative, let me yeah. guess, cutting everything away from the poor. That would favor the Pentagon, partially privatize Medicare, and rely on deep cuts in other social programs in a bid to wipe out deficits at the end of the decade. Social programs to wipe out deficits. That's correct. Not corporate welfare. That one percent. Not one percent of the do it. Of That'll the do it. One percent of the total budget yeah. is is for the little guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Most of it is for the military and yeah. corporate welfare. Oh, but no. But that's not the that's not the fiscal plan to deal with uh, 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 the deficit. It's it's starving off the little guy. That's the secret. Republicans yeah. have capitalism in a conch shell. Corruption also in a conch shell. What I was going to say before when I forgot yeah. was that all this moolah that the United States spends on the Pentagon and the military and mm -hmm. etc. The United States won its last war in World War II. It yeah. has not won a war since. Yeah, it's With awesome. all that money going on all these weapons uh, of mass destruction and whatever. World War II is also the last time the United States freedom was threatened. World War II. You know, like a legitimate reason to declare war. Yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of just trying to steal somebody's oil or, <laughs> or poppies. Uh. Poppies. Remember that from The Wizard of Oz? Poppy flowers. Get it? Afghanistan? Well, there you go. Afghanistan. Eleven years war. The longest war in American history. And what did we gain out of it? Poppies. Zero. 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 I think they're, what, 2,000-something killed yeah. and who the hell knows how many and what wounded? about the collateral damage of civilians? And Civilian casualties? Same thing in Iraq. Uh, complained that uh, uh, Saddam Hussein killed 20,000 people or whatever. And we go over there and kill two hundred thousand. Ah. At a protest of Sa of the uh, well, Saddam Hussein used to uh, attack the, the Kurdish rebels, the Kurds, and use poison nerve gas. He also had a ten-year war with Iran, which we provided him logistics and satellite images and all the other shit. And now we're now the United States is sorry for for aiding Saddam Hussein. Well, they're not sorry because it's part of the spending for the Pentagon, the military. It doesn't matter. It's business, baby! So, so everything with capitalism is uh, is business before, even if it's ill-gotten gains. That's it doesn't matter. Republicans like any way to make a buck. As long as you make a buck, they are satisfied with it. Sounds you can do like, no wrong because a buck sounds like certain equals success. Sounds like a certain group of people. I know. Okay. A buck anyway. equals success. A buck equals success. Money equals no, worth. No matter no matter how you make it. That's correct. 
But he who makes haste yeah. to be rich shall not be innocent. So how hold on. So how are they any different from from uh, the criminals they sent up the river? They, they sure arrested uh, Bernard Madoff. The, uh, they have the ability, like they did on Wall Street, under Clinton, they have the ability to change illegality into legality. Depending on who it is, right? Well, who's in charge? See? They turn corruption into See? campaign. Bernie Madoff. He happened to steal from the one percent, so he got life in prison, right? Bad boy, bad boy, he he bad made boy. off with the one percent's money. Bernie made off. No, can't do that. Can't do that. But if he would have ripped off the middle class, and he would have been in business. He would he would still be in business. Yeah. Because they are ripping off the middle class, who are the taxpayers and the, and, and the real consumers of the United States. The Republican plan also promised an overhaul of the federal tax code, called for a repeal of two of President Obama's top legislative achievements, Obamacare, and a measure enacted to crack down on Wall Street after the economy's near collapse in 2008. They don't want to crack down on Wall Street, do they? Of course not. They gutted the Dodd-Frank bill. They wouldn't elect uh, Elizabeth Warren to be the head of that program to go after Wall Street. Republicans said their balanced budget promise came with no tax increases. Though the fine print assumes the expiration of about $900 billion in breaks for business research and development and other items. It is a plan that balances the budget in 10 years, secures and strengthens vital programs like Medicare, said House Budget Committee Chairman Tom Price. Projected spending for the budget year that begins October the 1st was $3.8 trillion. Rising to $5 trillion in 2025. Obama countered Republican claims instantly. He said the GOP prescription is a failure to invest in education, infrastructure, and national defense. Damn, they always talk about education and infrastructure. Not everybody has kids in school. Not everybody's thinking about. I mean, there are there are other things too to spend money on. These things bring jobs. Bernie Sanders. And they bring. Who the hell wants to work on a fucking bridge or a road? The people who are skilled for those jobs. Let people go and do that. That go up high there and freaking. How can they do that if there's no money behind it? It's not exactly a glamorous occupation, you know, standing on a on a row with a jackhammer in your hand. I'm sure it wasn't a glamorous occupation when Mr. George Washington was at Valley Forge. Nah, was, but he did it. That was a bit chilly, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But he did it. All the things we need to grow, to create jobs, to stay at the forefront of innovation and to keep our country safe. We gotta have jobs in the US to get to That's where you get the jobs from infrastructure from education. Oh god help me. Well, oh my God! What about the discouraging 
many of the jobs that are outsourced now by perhaps tariffing the products as they come back to U.S. ports? Requires a law. Who's going to put it in effect? Actually, the House. That kind of a law is very similar to the law we used to have when the rich uh, pay like 91% tax rate. The United States used before it had an income tax. That's how it got its money. From tariffs. Tariffs? Because people wanted to sell their products in the United States. Today they don't. We want to sell our products in China. Ah, uh, so in other words, the consumer to the to the top one percent or twenty percent is no longer just the American people. It's international, international sales. So we're the priority of bringing products all here. Well, sure, no people more. don't have a pot to piss in to buy. So it's global. Yeah. The global economy. Bigger economy out there than over here. Okay. Well, the, yeah, the progressive tax system must originally you know, go back to the way it was, but I don't see Democrats changing that either because, uh, you know, like we talked about, the Democrats had control of Washington in the first two years Obama took office. And there was no universal uh, single-payer health care put in. There was no raising taxes on the rich Correct. such and such what does that tell you <clears throat> the party system is totally corrupt they weren't priorities they weren't yeah. priorities because uh, maybe these people are marionette puppets they, they, they not don't want the maybe what do you mean maybe they don't want to ruffle the feathers of somebody on top it's throwing them cash. That's correct. We cannot do that. Because then the cash flow will end, right? They are corrupt. Yes, of course it will end. And they will be ostracized. And without a job. Well, then they just have Maybe. to be independents like Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, as an independent, needs money too. Okay, I talk. We're back to changing the system. In other words, if Jesse Ventura uh, runs under the Libertarian Party, he needs he's money. He's going to need big moolah from somebody, right? That's correct. That's correct. That's the way the system works. And when Ralph Nader ran under the Green Party, he needed moolah from some big, some fat cats. That's correct. So all these people that are running, and he didn't have enough to be on television all over the United States, did he? Was he? Because he only got two hundred and some thousand votes. I don't think he was. In the he, end. I don't think he was even invited to the presidential. He was deb not debating. No debates. That's correct. The Republicans and Democrats have sewn up the debates they're, they're for only themselves. The League of Women Voters don't run the debates anymore. No, right? they don't. No, they don't. The Fairness Doctrine is also not in place. Thank you, Ronald Reagan. I'm trying to think of her name. Uh, uh, I think she's on Channel 2. I don't know. She's at the local New York News. When Chris Christie debated Barbara Buono at William Patterson College, Christine Johnson, very attractive, <clears throat> slim, uh, mixed race uh, girl, very pretty, she, uh, right at the beginning, she attacked Barbara Buono. So I'm wondering, being that she's from a major network, news team, that there were some corporatist force behind that because why would a woman considering the the wicked evil track record of a Chris Christie why would a female go after a 
female Democrat, mm -hmm. being that Democrats have women's interests at heart, especially, you know, a, a female Democrat, okay, she went after her, made it, tried to make her look bad right at the beginning. You know, you'll see it. If anybody watches the debate from William Patterson College, that's on YouTube, you'll see how Christine Johnson just attacked Barbara Bono. And, and it was, uh, it sounded unfair. You know, it's like, uh, um, you know, so, oh, what is your solution? What is your plan? You haven't answered me. What is your plan? She explained everything in detail throughout the debate. Oh, she had a plan. Of course she had a plan. Because, Mr. Chris, Does Chris Christie, Christie have a plan? Yeah, to, to raise the, the, the taxes on the poor and the middle class and give tax breaks to the rich. The reverse, the, corporation. the reverse Robin Hood, right? That's his plan, yes. That's his plan. He has a plan. I didn't say yes, it was, yes. was, was a nice, good plan. No, you know, no, no. It's good for them if you're a greedy yeah. son of a bitch, you know. The starving sea line pup was so tiny that it looked like a rock at the base of the seaside cliff until it struggled to raise its head as humans approached. Yeah, they're pretty cute. It bleated weakly as volunteer Brennan Slavic eased it into a crate for transport to a rescue center where it peered from a child's playpen with woeful eyes made enormous by an emaciated frame. Yeah, it probably was uh, nursing. It, was, it might have been at nursing age. At almost a year, the pup weighed just 23 pounds. A third of what it should. A staff quietly took it to a private room, euthanized it, and moved on. That's it? Euthanized it? It's a scenario playing out daily in California this year as rescue centers struggle to keep up with hundreds of sick and starving sea lion pups washing up along the coast. How much effort does it take to treat the wounds and get a and get a a, 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 a bottle of formula and, and 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 feed the pup and let it suckle. I mean, they got to euthanize them all. Bunch of scumbags. It was starved. Huh? It was starved. Stick a bottle there in its mouth. There comes a point. Let it suckle. There comes a point in starvation where you can't feed anymore. You mean no of no return? You mean assisted systems? Everything shut down. Vital systems were shutting down? Everything so even if you shove food in his gut... Like a human. Let's just take a human and, and a human is, who's not really starving, not to that point. You can't feed it a steak. No. You have to feed it a gruel or well, something. Or a pre, some kind of pre-digested... Justed something. Uh, yeah. Milkshake. You know, a, a meal, a liquid meal. Something... Easy. And I don't mean I don't mean insure or ultra slim fast. I mean a medically, from you know, a zoologically prepared veterinary formula. More than sixteen hundred and fifty <coughs> pups have been rescued. Right. It's not unusual to have some sea lions wash up each spring as the pups leave their mommies. But so far, the number of stranded babies is more. <laughs> than five times greater than in 2013. The worst season on memory. These animals are coming in really desperate. Mm. They're at the end of life. Yeah. They are in a crisis. Oh, I should say so. Scientists are not sure what's causing the crisis, but suspect that warmer waters from this winter's mild El Nino weather pattern are affecting the sea lion birthing grounds along the Channel Islands off the Southern California coast. The warm water is likely pushing prime sea lion foods, market squid and sardines and anchovies further north. 
forcing the mothers to abandon their pups for up to eight days at a time in search of food. Is there a male uh, sea lion keeping an eye on the pups? Well, you can't feed them. No, I gotta wait for the mom, I guess. The pups are weaning themselves early out of desperation and setting out on their own despite being underweight and ill-prepared to hunt. Sea lions would not normally start showing up in large numbers until April mm. or May. But this year, rescue centers began to get calls in December. They're leaving with a very low tank of gas. <laughs> they're running out of fumes. And when they get over here, they're showing up on the beach, basically starving to death. Oh. Oh well. That's that's it. It's a wrap. Um, I just want to say for those of you that are wondering why we have a skull and a skeleton, represents the end times, end time prophecy. Uh, anyway, thank you for joining <coughs> us for um, uncensored, hard hitting truth. Uh, we'll see you again uh, in April. You know, uh, it won't be April Fools, but we'll leave that up to uh, other people. Um, yeah, yeah, it'll be April. So take care. Have a good weekend and a good week. Bye bye. This has been a Mega Life Twenty One production.